In today's video, I'm going to talk about cooling system operation. So whether your car is overheating or takes too long to warm up, maybe the heat doesn't work or you see steam coming out the vents from under the hood or out the tailpipe. This video should be a good place to start familiarizing yourself with the cooling system in your car. So let's get to it. The engine produces heat. So there is water flowing through it to cool it down. Water absorbs the heat and flows from the engine to the radiator, where it cools down and flows back into the engine. Simple enough. But for the water to actually flow to the radiator and back, we need a pump. A water pump. The water pump is an impeller brought into motion by the engine. The impeller part of the water pump is placed on the inside of the engine where the water flows. And on the outside of the engine, the water pump has a pulley driven by the engine through a belt or a chain. So the speed of the water pump depends on the speed of the engine. The water pump begins to push the water and circulate it through the cooling system the moment you start your car. Now, when the water gets into the radiator, it cools down because of the air flowing across the radiator. That is why the radiator is placed in the very front of the vehicle to provide plenty of airflow, which works great when you're moving at highway speeds. But what if you're at a dead stop, stuck in traffic on a hot summer day? For those situations, we have fans to pull the air across the radiator. Some are engine mounted, usually attached to the front of the water pump and driven by the belt. Others are electric, mounted to the radiator. Engine mounted fans spin with the engine. So it's a pretty simple and self-explanatory concept. Whereas electric fans are operated by a computer called powertrain control module or engine control unit. But how does the computer know when to turn the fans on? See, there is usually at least one coolant temperature sensor plugged into the cooling system, somewhere in the radiator or in the engine, to tell the computer at what temperature the engine is running. And if the temperature is too high because the radiator is not cooling down the water very well, the PCM will turn the fan on. Now, moving on from the front to the back of the engine compartment. Behind the firewall, there is another radiator called heater core. It is significantly smaller and its main purpose is not to cool down the engine, but to warm up the passenger compartment. When we turn the blower motor on, we blow air across the hot heater core, bringing us heat on a cold winter morning. Speaking of cold winter mornings, one of the reasons we use coolant or antifreeze instead of just pure water is because water turns into ice at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And when water turns into ice, it expands and can easily crack the engine block from the inside, which would make it inoperable. Coolant mix has a much lower freezing point. Another thing cold mornings remind me of is a thermostat. The thermostat is basically a valve that restricts the flow of coolant between the engine and the radiator. It is placed on the engine side of either the upper or the lower radiator hose. You may wonder, why would you want to restrict the coolant flow? See, every engine operates best at an appropriate operating temperature. Oil is warmed up and flows better, providing optimal lubrication, fuel economy, and overall engine efficiency is at its peak. If we start a car cold, we want to let the engine reach its operating temperature as soon as possible. But if the coolant in the cold engine starts cycling through the radiator right away, it can take a long time for it to warm up, especially in the winter. That is why we have a thermostat. It keeps the coolant in the engine from entering the radiator until it is hot enough. Once the coolant warms up to the operating temperature, the thermostat will open and the coolant will flow into the radiator. This also helps with warming up the heater core faster, which is so important on a cold winter morning. Another important piece of any cooling system is a radiator cap. It serves three purposes. First, it acts as a cap, sealing off the cooling system, not letting coolant spill over. Second, when I drew this water flowing through the engine, I made it look like there is some air at the top. 
In reality, there is no air. At least there shouldn't be any air. Cooling system is filled with coolant completely, to the top. But when the coolant heats up, it expands, creating internal pressure, which can affect the flow and damage some components of the cooling system. So the cap also serves as a pressure release valve, usually rated at about 15 psi. When the pressure in the cooling system rises above that rating, the spring will collapse, letting the excess of the coolant flow into the overflow bottle. Third purpose, when we turn off the engine and the coolant cools off, it shrinks, creating vacuum in the system. So the cap has a vacuum activated valve, allowing the coolant to get sucked from the overflow bottle back into the engine. Now some cars may not have a radiator cap, and if you can't find one on your vehicle it is most likely because you have a coolant expansion tank. Unlike a regular overflow tank, expansion tank is a part of the pressurized system and will have a screw-on cap similar to the radiator cap, rated for pressure. The biggest difference between the two tanks, a regular overflow tank is not under pressure, so it will have a simple pop-off cap that can be opened even with the engine being hot, whereas the cap on the expansion tank, just like a cap on a radiator, should never be opened when the engine is hot because of high pressure and temperature in the system. So these are all of the major components of the cooling system. There are also radiator hoses and heater core hoses, connecting cooling system components, various housings that serve as connection points between hoses and the engine, oil coolers, like if we follow this lower radiator hose, there is two hoses coming off of it. They are attached to this oil filter housing for the coolant to flow through to cool down the engine oil. Radiators often have a cooler on the inside for automatic transmission fluid to flow through. Sometimes there are specific cooling system designs where coolant flows through a belt tensioner for instance. I have a video on how to replace coolant elbows on a tensioner like that, but obviously those components are more of an exception rather than the rule. I could also mention head gasket that keeps the coolant and the oil inside the engine separate, but I'm going to talk more about it in the next video where we'll be diagnosing cooling system problems, going over each component covering common failures and potential symptoms they would exhibit. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to be notified when the new videos come out, share your experience and feedback in the comments below, thank you for watching, good luck and take care.